Hey friends, welcome to this week's episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. The title of this episode is Motivation and the Solution to Your Problems. And I'm so excited. Today we have on Zach Tucker and Jeremy Grader, who are the founders and hosts of The Fit Mess. So guys, I'm so excited to have you on this week. Can you give the audience a little bit about your story and kind of how you got to where you are today? Sure. So uh, I think both Jeremy and I had some interesting childhoods and we came up, you know, a little bit, uh, a little bit rougher than, than some others, but we ultimately have fought through all of our battles and all of those things. And, um, we can go into more detail on it, but, you know, it took a lot of effort, struggle, a lot of, um, perseverance, resilience to get to where we are today to where I think both of us can say that we are the happiest, uh, both physically and mentally that we've ever been. Mm -hmm. uh, in our entire lives and our mid forties, which it took us a while to get here, but we're there. Um, but along the way, we learned a lot of things. We made a lot of changes. We got really curious about ourselves and we wanted to kind of give that back. So we decided to do a podcast, you know, specifically targeting men initially, but it really applies to everyone, uh, about, you know, what it is to be a man in today's day and age, um, to be healthy, both mentally and physically. Um, and, I remember the day that I brought that to Jeremy. I was like, we should do this. We should get on a mic, talk about our feelings and be vulnerable and mm -hmm. do that thing that guys don't do because not enough guys do it. And and he said, hell no. He said, no <laughs> way. Yeah, well, it's very vulnerable putting yourself out there for the world to see, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and, and so to pick up from there, you know, basically at that time, I felt like, well, we have no credentials on our walls. We didn't go to school for this stuff. Who's going to listen to us? What What expertise do we have? But now it's been several years and I still I still don't, uh, you know, come to the show every week with this is what you should do. I, you know, I'm not here to tell anyone how to live their lives, but I love when I do make some small change, some micro adjustment to my day or to my routine or my week. And it makes massive impact on my happiness, my mental clarity, my health, whatever. And so it's fun to be able to come and say, hey, I did this. And, you know, I, if you're like me and you've been on this journey for years and years and years and you never considered this. Give it a try. Maybe you'll have the same result. That's that's been you know one of the mo most exciting things about doing the show is that it inspires us to try new things so that we have something to offer to our audience. Uh, but also, I just I remember the early stages of this path when we started. You know, I mean, the show's only been around five years, but we've both been on this path for a decade or more. Mm -hmm. And in those early days, it's scary. It's lonely. You're you're looking at this mountain, going, "How in the world am I ever going to climb this thing?" And so, if we can help, just point where to put your foot on the next step, then, you know, it's, it's incredibly rewarding. So describe what is it to be like a well-balanced man in today's society? What does that look like for you? <laughs> I'll, through, I'll let you know when I figure it out. Of, you know? <laughs> yeah. I was going to say something similar. Like when I get there, I will tell you fully, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> um, you know, it's, I mean, it's a constant journey, right? It's mm -hmm. um, I think, I think the, the, the thing that is constant though, right? There's always changes. There's always adjustments to schedules. There's always things that we have to do differently. Mm -hmm. I think the thing that's constant for me though, in, in this is being okay with being wrong, right? I know men don't like to be wrong, myself included, but that's something that I've learned to embrace over the last few years mm -hmm. is what if I am wrong about this? What if this thing that I believe that was programmed in me in childhood or even 10 minutes ago what if it's wrong? What if there is a better way? What if, if there's another solution? What if, you know, the person I'm talking to is right and I'm wrong? Just being open to that and being curious about it. That's been a game changer to me is mm -hmm. to go into every conversation, whether it's with a friend, a spouse, a coworker, boss with, with the thought that what I'm saying might be wrong and what the other person might be saying is right. That's been, that's been a game changer for me, to be quite yeah. honest. It's, it's allowed me to open doors that I wouldn't have otherwise opened. And, you know, to be honest, it's, it's actually very freeing for me to not have to defend myself when I know I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, cause well, we all get in those ego, moments. Right. Yeah. yeah the ego. Absolutely. And I could say women can go through the same journey. I mean, it can look different, but you know, we go through the same thing of like, okay, we want more, you know, life is a mental game, you know, it doesn't matter you know, what your gender is, but you know, that's what it is. And it's all about motivation. And so you talk about motivation a lot. And what do you mean when you say motivation doesn't show up 
it's created. So can you go into more detail about that? Yeah, I mean, the way I look at it, you know, and, and from what I see and hear from people all the time is that that sentence of I'm just waiting to get motivated to, mm -hmm. you know, fill in the blank, whatever the goal is that you're chasing. And waiting for that just delays the action that you need to take to get there. And the funny thing that happens is when you start the action, the motivation is built into it because you see the progress and it feeds on itself. So, you know, if, if starting a new gym routine is the thing you keep waiting to start on Monday, you keep waiting to feel like it's the right time, yesterday was the best time but let's start now so just taking whatever those actions and the smaller the better if it's something new right because if you try and make some massive change overnight you're going to flame out it's going to exhaust you you're going to not see results right away you're going to get disappointed whatever the thing is so it's really just a matter of of again making the mountain analogy like don't don't look at the top and stare at that the whole time you're trying to get there just keep your your focus on the next step and by taking those little steps, eventually you can stop, take a break, look back at the path and see how far you've come. And that creates more motivation to keep going. Cause you're like, wow, I can't believe I made this much progress by doing just those little things. Mm -hmm. What can I possibly do next? And you know, around every corner is three new options for some exciting new challenge that life's gonna throw your way. And the further you get on that, on that journey, the more that motivation just is built into the process. Instead of waiting for some feeling that's fleeting, creating it and, and making it as a result of the actions you take. Yeah. I think you should put things in like measurable, like goals, you know, like have the big goal on top, but how are you going to get there? Like think strategically, come up with little goals so you can see the successes. And so you don't want to give up on yourself because like yeah, you're saying, yeah. some people are like, Oh my God, I didn't get here. And then they end up giving up on themselves, but they had that burning desire to continue moving forward. And the one thing I've learned, like through talking with people, if it's something that's inside of you that you're passionate about and it scares you, go for it. Most likely it's for you because you want to, you know, it's all part of the journey of like moving through, you know, dropping the egos, going through the gremlin that's in your head that tells you you can't like that's what part of the human experience is about. And you know, we have these things that stop us. So how is each person the cause and the solution of most of their own problems? Well, we, we make these choices ourselves, right? It's, it is literally like Jeremy was saying, when we wait for the motivation, mm -hmm. um, we are choosing to wait for that motivation. We know it's not going to come. Like we know that that's not going to come along the way, but we can also make a choice to do things differently we can make a choice to take those small steps. Like Jeremy was saying, take the small step, look back, see how far you've come. We, uh, you know, this is, this is human nature. I was just talking to my daughter about it yesterday um, at an amusement park when we were talking about roller coasters and being scared and not scared. There's like a whole psychological um, method that goes through your head. When you are trying to reach a goal, you can convince yourself that you can't do it. You can convince yourself that you're not capable. You can convince yourself that you don't deserve it, but you're also capable of convincing yourself that you do deserve it. You can get there, you can make it, and you can do all those things. It's all just a choice at the end of the day. You can either make the choice to not get there or you can make the, chase to, the choice to get there. Yeah, exactly. And so how is vulnerability a strength within that? I know for us, I mean, this show is a shining example of that. You know, it started with, you know, Zach on his own went down this path of trying to improve his life. I, on my own, went down a path of trying to improve my life. And when we met after, you know, the typical guy stuff of, you know, talking about the sports ball event that neither of us really cared about, we dug a little deeper and got under the surface and talked about being new dads and where we getting enough sleep and where we taking care of ourselves and how was the stress of all of that. And in each other, we found tools, resources, support. And it, that is just a, a tiny example of when you are vulnerable with your struggle, when you open up about what your needs are to your partner, to your friend, to your boss, whatever, that's, that's when the solutions show up. Either they have a resource, they didn't know you felt that way, whatever it is. But so often, I mean, again, maybe this is just me, I live in my head telling myself all these stories about the way that person is acting because of my action or because they believe this or they think that. And the whole time I have some unmet need that I'm not able to get from my brain to come out of my mouth hole. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So if I can find a way to say, hey, I feel this, this is my experience in this world, I need help or I need something to be different. Most of the time, the other person's like, oh my God, I had no idea. And that relationship is repaired or they have that resource and they offer it up to you. But you have to be brave enough to speak up for yourself. You have to be brave enough to, to put into the world in some way that I have this problem. Someone, if there's, if there's help available, please show me. And most of the time it shows up. Yeah. Well, I think the first part is recognizing it. You know, and some people have a hard time even recognizing what the problem is and identifying like, okay, what's my trigger? Why is this triggering me? And really taking the time to sit there and think about it. And especially in today's age, when we have distractions coming at us left and right with like the phone and, you know, easy accessibility to like, just keep our mind busy that we don't take the time to like sit in and reflect. So, you know, it's good to be able to take that time for yourself. So life is messy, but you don't have to clean it up all at once. So sometimes it starts with just clearing a path, you know, explain that. That's something that you had sent over to me. And so I was curious about, about that. Yeah. So that was, that was kind of the initial premise of our show um, when mm -hmm. we were kind of looking back at all the changes that we've made in our, our lives. And I know for me, whenever I have any anxiety, depression, any mental health issue, physical issue, like not happy with the way my body is, I immediately want to fix all of it in every way, shape and shape or form overnight. And I want the problem gone, but that's not healthy. Like we were talking about earlier. So the way we, we describe the show is we talk about these small steps, the little things that you can do. And the analogy that we used early on when we were putting the show together was imagine you have a house and you've been a hoarder for years and years and years and years. And like, you can't see the floors, you can't see the walls. There's just so much stuff in this house and you have to go to the bathroom. Do you have to clean the whole house to get to the bathroom? No, you just have to clean a path to the bathroom. Then you need food. Okay. Just a path to the kitchen. Then you need to get outside just a path to the front door. And eventually those paths will become, you know, open rooms and you'll clean the majority of the mess. There's always going to be a mess. But so long as you can navigate through the mess, get to the things that you need, get outside and get some fresh air, like that's the important part. That's the analogy. That's what we're kind of looking for is all of those small steps will eventually lead to the house being mostly clean, right? Mm -hmm. You'll have your way to everything that you need. You'll have your way to freedom. Um, but you do not have to clean the whole house just to get to the bathroom on that first step or just to get to the kitchen, just clear a path. and then look back, you know, celebrate your success and then go to the next path. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a great way to describe it, to really break it down, to have that visual of just clear the path to the first goal, you know, mm -hmm. and then to the second goal. So that was a really nice. Jeremy, do you have any um, thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, ju just really echoing what he said, that was, that mm -hmm. was the foundation of what we did here. It's just trying to help people figure out that you know, mountaintop, clean house, whatever analogy resonates with you, trying to do all of it is going to be way too intimidating and you're going to burn out. So just focus on that first path and it'll, it'll lead the way to the next. Yeah. So guys, I have four questions I ask all my guests and I can't wait to know what your answers are. Um, and so my first one to you two is who and what inspires you? Zach, why don't you go first? Yeah. Um, honestly, I think, uh, you know, it's kind of a cheesy answer, but it's my dad. Um, he passed away 22 years ago, but he was just, you know, a dad who stepped up and did what he needed to do for his kids. Mm -hmm. It was so out of his comfort zone. It was not his thing. He did the best he could, um, but he was just a hardworking guy who did anything he needed to do to take care of his family. So like for that, like that, my mom was not a shining example of what a parent is my dad is. And I really do try and live up to that image of him in everything that I do, not just being a parent, but everything. It's even if you're not comfortable with it. Okay. Let's figure out the way to do the best job that I can in the moment. Yeah. Beautiful. Jeremy. 
I think my answer is weird and maybe this isn't what you're going for, but I don't, I don't really have a role model. Um, I mean, there's lots of people that do things that I would like to emulate the way they do that thing, but I'm not really, I don't, I wouldn't say that I'm inspired by the way someone else lives their life as much as I look at the way I want to feel when I'm older. I look at the way I want to feel when I'm 75 and 80 and I look at the 75 and 80 year olds that I know now. And it's, you know, a lot of my youth, I spent running away from someone I didn't want to be like. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like I'm sort of running away from what I don't want to end up like. So I think I think what what feels true for me is I'm inspired by the healthiest version of the 75 year old me that I can create. Your future self. Can, yeah. So if I can keep focused on that person who's, you know, getting on the floor, playing with his grandkids, still riding his bike in the mountains and still like having fun. That's what inspires me. That's what motivates me to keep going. Yeah. No, that's a great answer. I mean, it's open, open game for anything. So that's a great yeah. answer. It, it feels a little egotistical to be like, <laughs> I inspire me. No, I you're not the first person that you're not the first person that said that like their right. future self has inspired them or, or something like that, but yeah. it's, it's a good way to be, you know, and then, then to have people to, to emulate or model kind of like the aspirations that you want. So, I mean, yeah, no, that's a great answer. So, um, so my second question is what is something that you wished you knew when you were younger? I would say that I wish I knew how much of an unlock to life consistency is. There are so many things that I tried and quit and tried and quit and didn't feel like I was cut out for, and that was for other people. And so I've spent a lot of my life playing catch up and I, I wish I had known that you know, if you can just get through the suck, uh, there's a lot of reward on the other side and a lot of improvement. So that's a miss. That's a, a message that I, I could have used 20 years earlier. Yeah. Zach. Um, well, I'll actually feed off of Jeremy's future self, um, answer and go with my past self. So I actually have a, um, a picture of myself as a seven-year-old, like in my living room that I look at probably every day mm -hmm. and, I still, to this day, like whenever I look at the picture, I'm like, you know what, buddy, it's going to be okay. And like I, to send some reassurance to that kid who was really scared and felt like life was over and things like that. So what I would have liked to have known 20 years ago was that everything was going to be okay. Like mm -hmm. through hard work and, you know, making changes and doing the things I need to do, it's all going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And you know, what's so great is that now we have like the power to instill this in our children, you know, because I don't know, I didn't, I mean, I was a little bit grown up that way to like, think like, oh, no worry. You know, this is only temporary, but we, our emotions get so like wrapped up in us that like having this knowledge now, like is great for our children so that we can help them work through, you know, generational frustrations or, or whatever. So, I mean, I think it's always good to have that self-awareness that we can pass on. Okay. So my third question is what's the essential part of your daily routine? Well, I'll go first just okay. because Jeremy always laughs at me about it. So my, the essential part of my daily routine, um, well, it starts the night before I make sure I get to bed by like eight 30 because I wake up at four 30 every day mm -hmm. and get up and go straight to the gym and move my body for about an hour and then come home. That's when I hit my caffeine. Cause then I, I delay that for about two hours. And then I spend a little bit of time meditating. So moving my body, spending time, you know, in my brain, trying to meditate and opening up my thoughts and getting that out of the way first thing in the morning. So, I mean, by 7.00 AM, I can literally check all those things off my, my list and feel like I've done something really good for me. Then I can move on for the day. But those that's my essentials for the morning. And um, everyone kind of looks at me funny when I'm like, I wake up at 4 30. Cool. Yeah, 4 30 is insane. That's that's crazy. Don't they have that <laughs> book? Um, or what is it like the morning routine thing? I forget. I'm like blinking out. Of course I am right now. But I mean, they say that you if you wake up at like 4 30 and start doing those things, you're like, it's like the winning, the winning thing. But it is, it is but really <laughs> by seven, but by 7 p.m., like I'm a pumpkin, like people talk to me and I'm like, I, I don't even like hear I'm the words. It's like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Jeremy, you. Yeah. And, and, and I'll just say like your idea of like that being the winning formula for Zach and for a lot of people, that's true for mm -hmm. other people. That's a horrific way to live. So if exactly. you, if that doesn't mesh with you, 
don't feel obligated that just because Zach does this that you have to. But I yeah, will say, I don't do like, it. <laughs> yeah, I know for me when when I'm in like the structured time of of the year when the kids are at school and everything's sort of locked in, I can get up at five and I can meditate and I can journal, I can have my coffee and my quiet time to myself, and I can drop the kids off and go to the gym. It's all good. Um, summer's a little bit more chaotic, so that's it's tricky summer. But uh, the essential for me is some sort of physical challenge, some sort of movement, whether it is like a nice long hike, going to the gym, something. And it's and it's not because of, you know, trying to build a six pack. It's not because I'm trying to get strong necessarily, but just the way that it calms the chaos in my head and the way that it moves the energy that just swirls and takes over and just zaps the energy that I could be using for more productive things. If I can get that out through, you know, lifting heavy things or whatever it is, it's critical. If I don't, I can, you know, my wife will tell you that I didn't go to the gym that day because of the way that, you know, I'm, I'm able to function as a human being later in the day. So some sort of physical movement first thing in the morning. Nice. Okay. And then my last question is um, the best advice you've ever received. Jeremy, you can go first. Uh, I, I will just point to the book that probably had the biggest impact on my life for Ryan Holiday. It's called The Obstacle is the Way. Just just that, the idea that whatever challenge, like you were talking about, the fear, whatever thing you're afraid of, whatever seems like the hardest thing is the lesson you need to learn. It is the fire you need to walk through to get to the other side. So whatever challenge you're putting off, whatever thing you're afraid of, whatever doesn't seem like you know, it's for you, all of that tells me that it absolutely is for you and you should face it head on and, and go after it. Zach? Um, so mine actually was a parenting, some parenting advice that I got when my daughter was first, uh, when, when my, my wife was pregnant with my daughter and, but it applies to everything in my life and I, I'll never forget it. Um, I told my boss that we were expecting and he was like, okay, I'm going to give you one piece of advice and I'll never give you another piece of advice ever again. He's like, when people give you advice on how to raise your child, nod, say, thank you. And then go raise your child however you see fit. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, huh, that's interesting. And then I thought about that and expanded it to everything in my life. And I was like, when people give me, me advice, I say, thank you. I take it in. I, I do look at it mm -hmm. and, and I see if it works for me. But to Jeremy's point, right? We're not all 430 in the morning people. Some of us wake up a little bit later. Whatever another person is doing, giving you advice, take it in, think about it. But it's a perfectly acceptable solution is to put that advice down, walk away from it. Nice. Well, thank you both for coming on to the podcast today. All of their information is down below in the show notes. Don't be shy. Go say hi. And thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. Thank you.